Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here and today got a 1 to 76 for you and this one is going to be on the Rogue class doing the Blade Dancer Mastery and it's going to be based around Shadow Daggers. This We did an endgame build guide based on McFluffin's endgame guide that he has on Max Roll and we decided that we'd do a leveling guide for it and this is going to be a very fast leveling guide. You can see even in the early monos which this gameplay is from, you're going zoom zoom, constantly just using shift to drop a shadow to drop the emblem blades that apply the shadow daggers and for single targets throwing in a synchronized strike it's very very fast paced it does a ton of damage and it goes extremely quick through the campaign with all of that in mind let's go ahead and jump into the leveling process all right travelers we are now level four we're gonna go ahead and go over the character sheet before we specialize into our first skill again physical resist and fire resist are kind of the first two that you really want to get through chapter one you're going to run into a lot of that as well as some poison but again resistances are the main form of defense you want in the game so cap all these at 75 that's gonna be the first thing that you want to work towards throughout the entire campaign for skills the first skill that we're specking into is going to be flurry for flurry we want to use it as a channeled skill but before we go into that it takes all of our mana we want to work towards getting health back on hit to be super super tanky get some mana back on hit and then we'll get into the channeling before we get to about level 20 and then we'll be going full shadow daggers at that point so the first point is going to go into alacrity for that attack speed as we work our way up for passives we got two points both of them going to swift assassin for that attack speed and physical damage to make flurry hit a little bit harder and then for the inventory again anything that you find on the ground right now is going to be fine get your resistances on the weapon if you really want to do a lot of damage throw on a two-hander and if you want to feel super tanky get some health on melee hit it's kind of a rare fix but on most characters you'll find it within the first chapter a few times and you can throw it on That'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 8 when we spec into our second skill. Alright travelers, we are now level 8. We've gotten our physical resist up, we're still working on getting the others up a bit. Remember, for every level that you go up, enemies get 1% more penetration, which means they do 1% more damage, so we offset that by getting our resistances up to 75%. So that is the first thing that you want to do. For skills, we got two more points for flurry. Going to throw them both into Blood Reverently for that leech that we can get, that'll help our survivability. Next we'll get some health gain on hit. For our second skill, we're going to go ahead and spec into shift, and the first thing we're going to want to do with it is work down here to proccing a shadow, having the shadow use shadow cascade, and then we'll proc into the shadow daggers after that. So one point into velocity. And for passives, we got seven more points. We're going to cap out the swift assassin for all that attack speed and physical damage. And then we're going to go ahead and throw one point into Guile for that poison resist and dodge rating. And then we'll build into less damage taken while moving. This is going to be a build where you're constantly on the move. And then for the inventory, again, just get all the resistances you can on all of your gear. And for the weapon, at least at this point, just get some health on melee hit. And you're going to feel really, really good. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 14 when we spec in some more passives into the skills. Or more points into the skills and passives. Either way.
Alright, travelers, we are now level 14. We're going to go ahead and spec in some more points into our passives and our skills. But first, the character sheet, as you can see here, still working on getting those resistances up. Right now in chapter 2 and 3, void resist is a really big one. So try and get as much physical and void resist as you can early on in these chapters. It's going to make it feel much, much better. For skills, we got three more points for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and put one of them into Second Wind, so we get four health every time we hit an enemy with it. One point in Sap Willpower for the mana back, and now we're ready to start working towards channeling it, which will cost mana, but we get that back on hits, so we can sustain it pretty much indefinitely as long as we're hitting an enemy. So that last point is going to go ahead and go into Alacrity for that attack speed. Attack speed does scale how fast that you're doing hits while channeling it. For shift, we got four more points. We're going to throw one more into velocity. Then we're going to throw two of them into momentum. And then we get one into lasting presence so that we now create a shadow after shifting. Next, we're going to have the shadows use shadow cascade, which will be nice. That shadow, when they proc it, or when they do shadow cascade, will make the shadow disappear. And then inside of umbral blades, we will be able to have the shadow drop an umbral blade. So you'll shift, a shadow will proc. That shadow will then use Shadow Cascade, making the shadow disappear, which then drops the Umbral Blade. The Umbral Blade will be a throw storm, then inflicting Shadow Daggers with all of its hits. So we'll be able to do that around level 20 to 28, which will be really nice. For passives, we got nine more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one of them into Evasion for that less damage taken while moving. Five into Dodge and Parry for all that Glancing Blow chance. Glancing Blow gives you 35% reduced damage on hits, which is really nice. So you'll have a 15% chance for that. And then the last three points we're going to put in Agility for that Haste on Hit chance. And we have increased damage based on our move speed, which is really, really nice. And then for the inventory, again, if you have health on melee hit while we're using Flurry, you're going to have really great sustain for your life. If you want to do more damage, just get more added melee physical damage, increase physical damage, or melee attack speed, and it'll feel really, really good. On everything else, just get all the resistances, extra health that you need to make yourself feel tanky enough to not struggle through the campaign. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill. Alright travelers, we are now level 20, which means we get to spec into our third specialization skill. But first, the character sheet, you can see here we have just over 300 health. We're still working on our resistance. We have a ton of physical and void already, which has made chapter 2 and 3 feel really, really good. We've been taking very little in terms of damage. And of course, you want to continue to get the rest of those all towards their cap of 75%. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and throw one more into Alacrity and then one into Boundless Blow so that we can channel it. This will do much more damage much faster. But of course, this won't really be our main source of damage anymore. It's going to be Umbral Blades. But against single target, this will still be nice until we get Sync Strike. For shift, we got one more point. We're going to go ahead and throw that point into Unseen Strike. We're going to work towards getting the Shadow Dagger chance 
advance on hit as we melee through shift. We already have it set up to proc a shadow and for that shadow to use shadow cascade, which will then make the shadow disappear and we're going to spec into umbral blades. But first we got to unlock it with some more passive points. So we're going to throw two more into the rogue mastery class. You have to have 20 in here before you can put any points into the other masteries. Both of those points we're going to throw into agility to cap that out. Then for Blade Dancer, six points, all of them going into Pursuit. This will give us increased melee damage as well as increased move speed for the five point bonus. Back to the skills, we can now spec into Umbral Blades. We have four points. We're going to throw one into Downfall, one into Edge of Obscurity, and then one into Umbral Remnant so that when our shadows disappear, they will now drop an Umbral Blade. We're also going to put one Blade into Sword Thrower. This is going to make them do more damage, but you only get one throw. And the next points that we want is to get Blade Storm so that they're going to spin in place and a point into Lethal Darkness to inflict the Shadow Dagger. Once you have these two, you're pretty much set up until we get Synchronized Strike. But those will be where the next two points go. For the inventory, again, you want as much added physical damage as much throwing damage. For the Shadow Daggers, they scale with throwing damage and added damage. And then for now, if you're still using Flurry, keep that health on melee hit to regen your life. But well, that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at around level 28 when we throw in some more points into our passives and skills. All right, Travelers, we are now level 22, and the reason that we're doing another update is we're going to switch out Flurry for Shadow Cascade. We have enough points in Umbral Blades to get the Blade Storm going along with the Shadow Daggers, and the build's just going to feel a lot better at that point, so we're going to make those changes. Not much has changed on the character sheet. Again, just keep working on your resistances now that we're in Chapter 4. The physical and necrotic is going to feel a lot better if you stack those up. For skills, like I said, we're going to go ahead and get rid of Flurry. And instead, in its place, we're going to do Shadow Cascade. And for Shadow Cascade, the main thing you really want to get is this mana refund so you don't run into any sort of mana problems. And because we're going Shadow Dagger, it'll be nice to get the damage out of that. So you don't have to worry about taking the more damage multipliers right off the bat. So we're going to go ahead and throw two points in Dismantle for that Armor Shred Chance. One point in Onslaught for the mana being refunded. And then one point in Fight in the Shadows. So that for every Shadow that's active when Shadow Cascade goes off, you get plus mana. And this will usually solve your mana issues if you run into any. For Shift, we're going to go ahead and throw one point into Broad Sweep as we work towards unlocking those Hidden Blades. And for Umbral Blades, one point into Cacophony of steel for that blade spinning in place and one point in lethal darkness so that we now inflict shadow daggers with the daggers and then for passives we got two more points gonna throw them into once for that melee physical damage as well as throwing physical damage remember the shadow daggers scales with melee and throwing physical damage which allows it to do really really big damage and that'll be it for this update I'll see you guys at level 28 when we put in some more points
Right, travelers, we are now at level 28. It's time to put in some more points into our skills and passives. But first, the character sheet, again, still working towards getting all those to 75%. That's the main thing you want to work on. Get your resistances up and then get some additional maximum health just to feel better. For skills, we got four more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to cap out the Fight in the Shadows for that mana gain per shadow. One point in Crushing Darkness so that you get 30% more damage with Shadow Cascade. And then the rest of our points, two of them into Dagger Dance so that we throw out daggers. And those daggers, of course, will have a chance for Shadow Dagger once we get up here into the top right corner. For shift, we got one more point for broad sweep and then one point into hidden blades so that we have a 50% chance to apply a shadow dagger on all the hits we do so we can shift through enemies and apply it, which is nice. For humble blades, three more points, all three of them going into steel turret to increase that blade storm duration and area, which will be really nice having it hit more enemies, especially the ones running behind us in a big group. And then for passives, five more points, all going into once for all that melee physical and throwing physical damage damage for gear at this point you do have to dual wield in order to manually use shadow cascade you don't have to dual wield if you're just proccing it through shift but on your gear you want as much added physical damage increased physical damage as you can get you can get throwing damage on your rings your belt your amulet i believe it also comes on relic which will be really nice so get as much throwing damage and physical damage and melee damage as you can after that just get all of your resistances until they're covered and that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 35 when we spec into our fourth skill. Alright travelers, we are now level 35, which means we get to spec into our fourth skill. But first, let's go over the character sheet. Again, still working towards getting all of your resistances towards 75%. That is the first thing you want to do. Here in chapter 4 and 5 that I'm in, physical and necrotic resist is kind of the main thing you want. I am really lacking on necrotic, and I can definitely feel that when enemies are hitting me right now. It would definitely be nice to have that a bit higher at this point. For skills, we got three more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to throw two more in Dagger Dance to have those daggers being thrown out. And then one point in Porcupine's Wraith so that we have an additional three daggers being thrown. So every one of our shadows, when they use Shadow Cascade, including ourselves, will throw out seven daggers. And our next point will then have those daggers applying the Shadow Dagger effect. For shift, we got two more points. We're going to go ahead and throw the second point into Hidden Blades for that Shadow Dagger chance on hit. And then one point into Swift Recovery so we can start getting some mana back when we use it so we don't run into any sort of mana issue. For Umbral Blades, we got two more points. We're going to cap out the Steel Turret for that Blade Storm duration and area and then start building into the Dust Shroud chance on use. Even though we're not really manually casting it, if you do, you will have a chance for that dust shroud, which gives you dodge rating and glancing below chance. And then for the fourth skill, we're going with synchronized strike, which is really going to help with our single target damage. And with it, we're going to go ahead and put four points into coordinated cuts for that armor shred chance and armor shred effect. And then one point in umbral assassination so that all the hits we get with synchronized strike will apply shadow dagger on hit. For passives, we got 10 more points, we're going to cap out the once, we're going to cap out the pursuit, and then put the rest of our points into Cloak of Shadows for that dex and glancing blow chance. And then for the inventory, again at this point, just get any added throwing damage, added melee physical damage, increased physical damage. This is going to be the main types that you want to increase the damage of the Shadow Daggers. For everything else, just get all the resistances and health that you can for survivability. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 43 when we put some more points into our skills and passives.
All right, travelers, we are now level 41. Time to put some more points into our passives and our skills, but first the character sheet. As we go into the monolith, I finished chapter seven. We've got all the idol quests done, so we've unlocked all of them. We're going on to the first timeline in the end game. Physical and necrotic resist is kind of the main things you want at this point. I still need a lot of necrotical, but we do have the physical capped. For skills, we got two more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to put one point in Shadow Elegance so that when we use Shadow Cascade at the end of our shift, we're going to throw out those daggers, and each dagger has a 100% chance to apply a Shadow Dagger from us and 20% chance from each of the Shadows, which is going to apply a lot of Shadow Daggers, which will be really nice. One point in Dagger Flow so that those daggers can travel further. For shift, we got one more point. Going to continue to build and getting that mana back with Swift Recovery. For Umbral Blades, two points, put them both into Downfall for that Dust Shroud chance on use. And then for Synchronized Strikes, we're going to build into the extra shadows eventually, but mana can become an issue with that, so we're kind of saving it till we get more mana regen and just kind of build into it more. For now, we're going with three points in Dynamics, two points in Art of the Blade, and one point in Perfect Coordination, so all of our shadows will jump inward, making them much easier to hit single targets. And then the last point in Growing Darkness as we work up towards the Dark Allies. For passives, got nine more points. We're going to cap out the Cloak of Shadows. Put one point in Shroud of Dust, so there's a chance for us to get a Dust Shroud whenever we get hit. Five points in Blood Dance should solve our health regen problems. We should be able to get 5% of all that melee damage. Leech's Health, the Shadow Daggers, the Shadow Cascade, and the Umbral Blades are all melee, so that'll be a lot of Leech for us. Then one point in Asuvon's Pact and one point in Perfection to get some extra damage from those Perfection stacks. And then for the inventory at this point, again, you want added throwing damage, added physical damage, increased physical damage are going to be your best stats for getting the most damage out of those Shadow Daggers. For everything else, get health and all the resistances that you need. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 50 when we spec into our fifth skill. All right, travelers, we are now level 50, which means we get to spec into our fifth skill, which will be Smoke Bomb, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, the character sheet. Again, get all your resistance to 75%. This first timeline that we're running, physical and necrotic is the main thing we're running into. I've got those capped. We're ready to take the boss on here soon. But again, you want to get all of these to 75% before we start worrying about other things like endurance and critical strike avoidance. Or skills. We've got two more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to go ahead and throw another one into Dagger Flow and then one into Gloom Stalker so that we can create another Shadow on Kill Chance or at least have a chance to, which will be nice. For Shift, we've got two more points. We're going to go ahead and throw both of them in that Swift Recovery for that mana back doubled if we're at low life. For Humble Blades, we have two more points. We're going to go ahead and put them both into the Edge of Obscurity so that we have extra damage per Dust Shroud if you are manually casting this. You are going to be able to get that Dust Shroud 
at a 48% chance every time that you manually cast Umbral Blades. This will make it do more damage, and of course it's doubled when we're in Smoke Bomb, which we'll be specking into here in a minute. For Synchronized Strike, we got three more points. We're going to go ahead and throw two of them into Foreshadowing and one point into Dark Allies. So we'll now make four shadows instead of two. Of course, this will make the mana cost almost twice as expensive, so it's going to be 77 mana now instead of about 38, 39 where it was sitting. Then for Smoke Bomb, which is going to be our fifth and final skill, we got seven points. We're going to throw one into Shrouded in Darkness so we can get those Dust Shroud stacks. Then two points in Lingering Fumes, one point in Smoke Blades for that melee damage and throwing attack damage increase, which will increase the damage done by Shadow Daggers, and then the rest of our points in Umbral Assault, so that every second in Smoke Bomb, there's a 75% chance, 100% chance with one more point, to create a shadow every second that will then, of course, use Shadow Cascade and then drop in Umbral Blades. So just an extra way to get shadows, and when they do the Shadow Cascade, they will give you mana. So it's kind of a mana generator for us, especially with Synchronized Strike being so expensive now. And then we got nine more points for the Blade Dancer. We're going to go ahead and put five points into a Suvon's Pact for that extra dodge rating as well as increased damage at full health. And then we're going to throw one point into Confidence so that for every stack of Perfection that we get, we get flat dodge rating as well as flat armor, which will really boost our defense. And then we're going to throw the rest of our points into Critical Eye for that Critical Strike chance and Critical Vulnerability chance. And that's going to work our way up to the all-in for that Critical Strike multiplier since the Plunge effect of Shadow Daggers is a guaranteed crit. We don't care about the less damage done by non-criticals hits, and this will just make us hit harder with it, which will be nice. And then for the inventory, at this point we are wearing sword and sword, but basically you just want as much increased physical damage, added physical damage, and added throwing damage as possible, and with everything else, just get the resistances that you need. One thing of note, at level 52, you do get the smoke weavers, if you have those, definitely throw those on at 52, you're going to feel a big damage boost, and you'll be able to use shift way more often with these as they reduce the cooldown, with both of them maxed down at 50%. 25 a piece and then for idols just get a bunch of health or resistance or anything else you need at this point there's not much else we're going for this early yet we'll get into that later and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 60 when we put in some more points
right, travelers, we are now level 60. Time to put in some more points, but first the character sheet. We're still working towards getting 75% resist on everything. We also have quite a bit of dodge on this build and a little bit of armor, but again, get your resistances all to 75% and having more dodge also will make you feel much better as you'll get hit less often. And that'll also really work well with our passives for those perfection stacks for additional armor and dodge. For skills, we got two more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to cap out the Gloom Stalker and one more point into Dismantle. For Shift, we got two more points. We're going to cap out that Velocity for its cooldown recovery and then one point in Momentum to have additional length of the Haste buff. For Umbral Blades, we got two more points. We're going to cap out the Edge of Obscurity as well as put one point in Loathing so our Blade Storms can home in on enemies. For Synchronized Strike, we got two more points. Both of them going into Harmony of Death for that critical vulnerability chance on hit. And then for Smoke Bomb, 10 points. We're going to cap out the Umbral Assault so that we now have a 100% chance for a Shadow every second. Three points points in blood, blood Bandit so that while we are in Smoke Bomb, we'll have that melee damage leech which will really help with our survivability. Three points in Lingering Fumes so that Smoke Bomb will last as long as possible. And then we're going to start working down here on the left side towards that Shadow Dagger Chance with one point in Thick Smoke and then two points in Eroding Fumes. We're going to work towards getting the Knives in the Dark for that Shadow Dagger Chance on Slow since we're applying Slow every second. We'll be able to have a 70% chance every second of applying that and that increased frequency it'll be even a little faster than that. For passives, we got 10 unspent points. We're going to put four more into perfection. Then we're going to throw one into exuberance so that we can now have 10 stacks of perfection, each stack giving us 10% increased damage as well as 10 flat armor and dodge. And then with exuberance, we gain two stacks of perfection every time that we hit an enemy with a melee skill. And shift is a melee skill allowing us to shift through enemies and gain those stacks. And with high dodge, we can hopefully not get hit and keep them all. And then the last five points all into all in for that critical strike multiplier that's going to make Shadow Dagger the plunge effect, which is a guaranteed crit hit much harder. And then for the inventory, again, if you don't have smoke weavers, any dagger or sword, it's going to be fine. Just get as much melee physical damage on it added and increased, and it'll feel great. But that's going to be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 76 when we put in our final points. Alright travelers, we are now level 76, but first the character sheet before we get into the skills, we're still working on capping all of our resistances to that 75%, and then we're just going to be really focused around dodge, and then for defense, get your endurance and critical strike avoidance up. Cap the endurance out at 60, and the critical strike avoidance out at 100%. For skills, we have three more points for Shadow Cascade. We're going to cap out the Dismantle for that Armor Shred Chance, and then just put a point into Fray for some bleed with those knives. For Shift, we're going with one point in Shadow Slip to be invulnerable while shifting, and then two points so that we have a ton of dodge rating per our decks after we shift for one second for Umbral Blades. Three more points. We're going to go ahead and put all three of these into the cut and leave just for some bleed chance and you get haste on recall although we won't be recalling them so much in this one for synchronized strike three more points we're going to cap out the coordinated cuts for that armor shred chance and effect as well as two points in harmony of death for that critical vulnerability chance so if enemies do have 100 percent critical strike avoidance you can actually wear that down and then crit them and then for Smoke Bomb, we got three more points, one more in the Eroding Fumes, one point into the Swirling Fog, and then one point in Knives in the Dark, so that you have a chance to apply the Shadow Dagger every chance that you apply slow. For passives, 16 more points. We're going to throw 12 of them into the base class with 8 of them into Duelist for increased dodge rating while dual wielding because we are. And then 4 into an evasion so that we take 25% less damage while moving since we're basically always moving in this build. That's huge DR for us. And then the last 4 points, we're going to put 1 into Shadow Master for the plus 1 maximum shadow. So with Smoke Bomb going off and with Synchronized Strike, you might have additional shadows that all can drop the Umbral Blade. And then we have Confidence and the last three points there for that armor and flat dodge rating per stack of perfection. And then for the inventory, again, 
on the helmet and chest you can get physical penetration with shadow daggers getting tier 6 or tier 7 of that will make a huge difference you can get that same affix on idols so be sure to look for that if you have a weapon and you're not using the spoke weavers just make sure to get as much added melee physical damage increased physical damage as you possibly can and then for everything else on your rings and everything get as much throwing damage get physical damage get some mana regen and then just work on getting as much health as well as all your resistance is capped and you'll feel really good in the end game and that's going to be it for this update let me know how it went for you guys as always stay safe and have a good one